pulled him out. See? Um, the Lord led me to the Lord of the Rings. I highly recommend you to watch Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, because you're going to find out that there is an invisible battle, and, and what, what happens is, is there's like a burden that Frodo has to carry, and it's an invisible battle. You don't really see that much, but there's, there's a physical battle, and then there's a spiritual battle. So the spiritual battle that the remnant is going through is like Frodo fighting the invisible key battle that must be won in order to, for the whole army to be victorious. So there's a spiritual battle that has to take place. And when we win that spiritual battle, then the physical battle can be won. But there ain't no way you're getting across that Jordan without Joshua. So what the, the movie talks about is... There are four hobbits, and one of the four hobbits it personally has to carry that burden. But the other ones kind of help him carry it. But he carries it the majority of the way. He gets to the end, and his friend helps him carry. He picks him up because he can't carry the burden by himself. So he picks him up with the burden and carries him the last part. That's what has to happen. That's spiritual language, type and shadow. Thus the collaborative work of the hobbits, the ring was destroyed. Go ahead. The physical battle was necessary to divide the en enemy's attention and allow Frodo to reach the crater and destroy the ring. But guys, one brave hero cannot do it all. The whole army must fight for their deliverance. The fighters are held together by a common set of spiritual principles. we got the same vision. We are at one, as Gladiator says. At one. We have to be. That's why we have to have unity. We can't have all these people thinking that they're Joshua's. Guys, I can't do what you do. You can't do what I do. We're all called. Uh, it says he gave son to be uh, with the gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers. According to the measure of of the grace that's upon your life. That means what you're called to do. You get a measure to do it. I get a bigger measure right now because I'm carrying a bigger burden. That's how it works. So the fighters are held together by that vision. And what is the division? What is our objective? Our objective is to get the people out of Egypt and conquer the promised land. Get those enemies out of the promised land. Those are two objectives that we have. And we have to be at one when we do it. Okay? After the disciples faced their failure to understand and recognize the God nature in Jesus, then they were able to complete their journey to Gennesaret. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him. By recognizing it, they were able to save all the people of that land. And God's kingship was established. That was the revival. So this is the gravitational force that happens when they carry the three parts. That actual gravitational force stops the Christ. There has to be that critical mass that is needed for revival. So what happens is the fourth day resurrection power. Here it is. I'm so excited to teach this. The green horse causes the earthquake when they come out of shield. Okay? Here's the answer to how in the world does my agitation affect the constellations. Okay? God showed me it's because of the theory of general relativity. Now you've got the universe at a macro scale, right? But then you've got an atomic scale, an atom scale. I hope I'm not, if I'm, too, if I'm talking too high, let me know. This is how I understand it. So quantum mechanics describes the universe at an atomic scale. Okay? So there are three forces that happen at an atomic scale. In other words, if we were going to go into a laboratory and examine an atom. Not the universe. We're not looking at the universe, the forces... We're just looking at the atom. There are three forces that you're going to see when you're examining that atom. You're going to see the electromagnetic force. 
You're going to see the strong nuclear force and you're going to see the weak nuclear force. In quantum mechanics, you can only explain these three of the fundamental forces of the universe. And there's a reason for that. Because we can't carry the gravity. Gravity is the fourth. But the thing is, is three out of the four fundamental forces of the universe, the faithful remnant carries three parts of the burden. See, this to show you too. Type and shadow. The natural shows you a, a, a understanding, a parable of the spiritual. Because we, in this physical world, came out of the spiritual world. Everything came out of the spiritual world. So God wants you to look back at the spiritual world all the time. So he has all these little things in the world to show you what's going on. This being one of them. Do you understand that these forces are God's power? God created science so that we could understand him. But there are evil people that are at the head of the science mountain and they're leading people astray to go, well, I don't, I don't really believe there's a God. But God is going to cause science and the Bible to come back together in the end times because he created it to do it. As soon as the Christ come in there and have all this information, that's it. The world's going to see that this is about God. So you cannot carry the fourth alone. At the fundamental atomic scale, the faithful remnant can set it all up. But in order to be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and fill it, on a macro scale, there must be a critical mass. So it happens on an atomic level. I can do all that. I can affect everything in here. I can go through the judgment process. Everything in here. But in order to affect the universe, I need you can't do it by myself and God created it like that there must be a critical mass that's willing to carry the burden for the last fourth part the spiritual reason the gravitational force which governs masses and operates on a macro scale is the only force that falls outside of the realm of quantum theory go ahead so these fundamental forces they correspond with the four faces of the gospel this is the power of God. These are God's faces. The lion, the eagle, the ox, and man. It's the power of God, the nature of God, the character of God. Strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, and gravity. That's the power of God. I want to break it down. The strong nuclear force is the lion. The ministry endowment of the lion is the apostle. So what is the strong nuclear force? When you're looking at an atom, it's what holds it together. Remember I told you that people that are not with God, they're not reasonable. They don't have it together. See this? So therefore, that's what holds that atom together, the glue. Actively forcing the protons and neutrons to remain joined. To form the atom allows matter to maintain its substance. Without this force, there would be no substance. Everything would just fall apart like sand. This is big. This is really, really big. This is what we grow in. This is our apostolic, our lion. You grow in your strong nuclear force. Woo, this excites me. So God only builds on a righteous foundation. So judgments forge God's righteousness. That's what keeps those protons and neutrons together. Otherwise, you're just kind of flailing. Cool, huh? Okay. Christ is the strong nuclear force. You can see in Colossians 1, 13 through 20. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us in the kingdom of his beloved son. So that's that bridge. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Guess what? All the Christ were in Jesus. We were in him from the foundation of the world. We were in God from the foundation of the world. And we were sent here to do a job. 
For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, invisible and visible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority. All things have been created through him and for him. Do you see the strong nuclear force? It's holding it together. He is holding the universe together. You know what holds it together? Apostolic. But what holds it together? The Word of God. Without the Word of God, the devil wants to take the Word of God away from us. Without the Word of God, everything goes to mush. Mush. And it goes on. And that's what it's talking about is the strong nuclear force. Without Christ, without the Word of God being the written Word of God, and without Christ being the Word of God that hears from their Father, the world will turn to mush. So the weak nuclear force is the eagle, which is the prophet. Did you know that the weak nuclear force actually drives the sun? They keep electrons circling around the nu nucleus because it violates, this is interesting to me, this nu weak nuclear force violates symmetry law. Why? Because the left hand is the prophet and it defies traditional protocol. The prophet doesn't do things the way man does it. The prophet comes to say, man, you're disobeying God. The prophet doesn't do things man's way. So this is another type and shadow. It's the left hand. The prophet defiles traditional protocol. This is the force that only acts on the left-handed particles. And this is a force that operates at a distance versus close up like the strong nuclear force. So the weak and the strong nuclear force are what gives the atom its full shape. Look what it says in Ephesians 2, 20 through 22. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus, that means fully Christ Jesus himself, being the cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together in the dwelling of God in the Spirit. That's the weak nuclear force. The apostolic is laid, and then the prophetic. Without that, there is no foundation. See? Go ahead. The electro, this is my favorite. The electromagnetism force is the ox, the evangelist, I think this week I've been developing my evangelistic. This is where I'm really growing right now. Because God was showing me this is like waves. This is like your spiritual authority. Why do I have spiritual authority? Because I have wisdom. This is how you have wisdom. Is by your electromagnetism force. This is discernment. I mean, how many times did you say the word discernment today? I have discernment and I can tell you're real. <laughs> So he's saying he has electromagnetic force. Invisible streams in the atmosphere along with electrons and other matter can be easily transported. So wisdom gives you ability to discern the invisible streams in the physical and of the spiritual atmosphere. And you're able to flow in those streams in order to conquer spiritual and physical realm. When you have your evangelistic anointing, you have authority over the spiritual realm and over the physical realm. You grow in that. And it's the most expansive and produces the strongest effects and consequences in the atmosphere. So like what I'm feeling is going out into the atmosphere. My apostolic, as I increase in my apostolic and in my prophetic and in my evangelistic, I have become one with God. And I'm waiting. That pastor teacher comes out when, she, when you come out of Sheol. So I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing. I'm wanting to be one with God. And I'm shaking the earth. Let me out. I want to go to the people. I want the resurrection power to be able to transform the world. But I can't do it by myself. You detect the spirits in the atmosphere and you have authority over them. What does that mean to have authority? It means you have answers to problems. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, so now that leaves you with gravity. Now, gravity is man's face. 
That's the pastor teacher. That's the part that you have to carry. General relativity.